All right, welcome back, everybody. This week, we're going to talk about finished testing. Specifically, what does it mean when it says it meets or exceeds KCMA specifications? And what are some of the caveats to those testings that you should look for as a finisher to do some of your own testing? Let's get to it. All right, welcome back, everybody. So this week, we're going to talk about finish testing. And what does it mean when it says it meets or exceeds KCMA specifications? All right. So before we get started in this, I just want to say I'm a firm believer of test, don't guess. Meaning that I think that you should... Any product that you get, I should, I think you should take it through its paces and how it's going to live in its environment, um, and know the product before you put it out on um, client stuff. Um, I've seen a lot of guys recently had a lot of issues with stuff that they probably could have saved themselves some trouble had they pre-tested um, the system. All right, so who is the KCMA, and what do they do? Do they have anything to do with finishing? Well, not really. The KCMA is the Kitchen Cabinet Manufacturer Association. All right. And essentially what they do is um, if you're a cabinet manufacturer, um, you can become a member with them and the cabinets that you build go through a rigorous ANSI standards um, thing, which is this is what I got right here. I paid like $25 for you guys so that I could go through this with you. Um, and they test load rating and all kinds of stuff, cabinet construction, to make sure that it meets a, a certain level of quality. And then you get that little stamp of approval and sticker on there. You've probably seen it if you've refinished kitchens. Um, I've seen it on several kitchens that I've refinished. Um, but they don't actually certify finishes or test finishes. They test cabinets with finishes on them. All right, that that's a myth that I think a lot of people have. Oh, it meets KCMA guidelines. So, what are the guidelines for the KCMA? All right, um, there's kind of there's kind of four tests that they do. Um, the first one is uh, shrinkage and heat resistance, and the purpose is to test the ability of the finish to withstand high heat for long periods, such as inside trucks, box cars, or other transport or storage facility or in service under normal kitchen conditions all right um, and the way this works is they place it in a hot box uh, at 120 degrees Fahrenheit 5% 70 to 5 70 plus or minus 5% relative humidity for 24 hours and then they allow this allow it to stabilize and then they make sure that there's no discolorations blisters cracks etc etc now they also do a hot and cold check resistance, which is similar to that, um, but this time they put it in a hot situation and then a cold situation. So they put it in the um, the door in at 120 degrees, and then they put it um, and allow it to um, dry for half an hour, or sorry, reach um, room temperature for half an hour, and then they place it in a cold box at negative five degrees Fahrenheit for one hour. Which I think is interesting. Um, oh, actually, these are both one hour, and then it has to go through five cycles of this, so it's going hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold. Um, so you would see, you know, the wood's going to expand and contract some. You're going to see if that that um, finish is flexible enough um, to deal with those hot and cold cycles. Uh, the next one is the chemical resistance. And what they do in, in that is they take the panel uh, cabinet door or cabinet side, place it in the vertical position, and then they put three cc's of vinegar, lemon, orange, and grape juices, uh, ketchup, coffee, olive oil, 100 proof alcohol, and a detergent solutions. And that sets on there for 24 hours, and then they come back and wipe it off and make sure it doesn't leave any marring or anything like that. Now there's one catch in that, the mustard, they only leave on there for an hour because obviously mustard stains pretty badly. 
next one and the final one is um, the detergent and water resistance where they take the door and they set it in a tank uh, with some type of detergent I don't know what that actually is it doesn't say um, and then it sets in the detergent in the water for 24 hours and then you have the same thing now all right, so one of the caveats uh, with the testing is is that most of these manufacturers don't tell you um, how they set up the KCMA spec testing was it on a clear piece of maple is it third-party testing is it on dark colors um, and the reason I say that this is important um, this is totally my opinion is that I had an issue several years ago with a black and when water would get on it it would turn white and blush exactly what the KCMA says that the product shouldn't do and it was a clear over a um, painted product and this was totally done the way that they had recommended to do it so when I test finishes I like to test them on dark colors because or dark stains because generally you're gonna see your issues all of these things can have an effect also flatteners can affect it um, pigments you know all these things that we're looking at affect how the outcomes are these tests are so and I'll give you a good example um, you guys know my favorite the CIC water base this was an acetone wipe on this now this is a flat and we've seen before that in this same situation if I used a satin that there's no issue it just kind of glosses the surface so flatteners can affect it um, we also saw in the pigmented uh, with the CIC that um, it's not as good as the clear the problem is a lot of this jargon in these data sheets are just like crossover they'll just say that it meets these requirements um, and you just don't know for sure so that's why I'm saying you know test don't guess now interestingly enough um, target coatings was one of the only ones that actually gave us a scenario and what there says was a KCMA spot test on sealed maple veneer four to two mil coats of the EM 8000 CV gloss and then it had a four hour dwell time and a four hour recovery time and then it lists the results on it um, ML Campbell has an interesting one where they talk about they meet AWI specifications okay so I went and looked up that and AWI is similar to the KCMA um, but they also do woodworkers and designers AWI is the overarching but then the test procedures is under AWS they have a number rating from one to five um, for chemical resistance and for adhesion and I really like that because it kind of spells out what what you're kind of looking at now let me give you an example of some of the stuff they have on here so they have general durability repairability abrasion resistance finish clarity yellowing in time finish flexibility moisture resistance solvent resistance stain resistant heat household chemical builds slash solids and dry time and they have like i said they have it rated from five being excellent to one being poor now also do a whole listing of uh, vinegar lemon juice and all uh, um, pretty much what the KCMA does plus a whole bunch of other stuff they even got gasoline on here um, I thought that was interesting um, and then they add all these points up and they give it like a total so one thing that I found interesting and I've been saying this for a long time is that the majority of these water-based products that are out now are as good as a solvent base uh, pre-catalyzed lacquer um, so a lot of you guys that are thinking about switching from uh, solvent to water base, you know, whether you like it or not, um, you know, it's totally your opinion. I, I have no issue with shooting solvent based stuff. It's actually in many ways easier. Um, but the w acrylic cross-linking water base uh, products ended up being a higher rating than the pre-catalyzed lacquer. Um, now they're saying here that if if it's within 10 points then it's sort of a toss-up but the the pre-catalyzed lacquer got a 99 
and then the acrylic cross-linking got 109. Now, the numbers are different for various things in here, but um, I think this is worth going and checking this out. Uh, a lot of people might find this just interesting. Now, getting back to the ML Campbell, so they ranked, um, they have, they used the excellent and poor um, thing. Now, on here, it says acetone, and it says excellent. Now, this is the Aguilante Plus. Nope, 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 sorry. That's the CIC. Uh, this is the Aguilante Plus, and that has been rated as excellent. Now, I, excellent in, in compared to what? That's, that's sort of my question with this is, and I'm not picking on ML Campbell, uh, but again, what I'm getting at is like, I think you gotta do your own, your own testing. Um, I would say that that is, is good, but you know, maybe they tested it on a gloss and it didn't do anything and they're saying it's excellent. So these are the things you gotta kinda <clears throat> look at and think about. Um, when you're using these products, most of these companies are putting out really great solid, solid products. Um, and I, I've shot seven of the most popular ones and um, I only had a couple of issues um, crop up and I'm going to actually retest two of them um, again to make sure that it wasn't an anomaly. But anyway, um, the way this came about for me um, and the reason why I'm doing this video is because I had a guy from an R and D, an R and D guy from a lacquer company, contact me, and he was talking about one of the tests I do being um, biased. And I think he had some really good points um, about what he was saying. Is you know I didn't offer the mill thickness and all that sort of stuff, and that's one thing I'm going to start doing for you guys is down in the description. Um, I probably may not tell you every time all the details, but I'm going to have all those details listed below so that you will know that based on this testing and this many wet mills and this sort of stuff, this is the results that you're going to that you're going to get and achieve. Now, I don't want to get too crazy with it because um, I want to kind of keep it more real world, you know, in terms of you know, I don't want to get too lab-based testing, and I'm going to leave that to the guys that are way smarter than me for that. But um, if any of you guys out there and you're watching this stuff and you think that, you know, we can make this channel better and help people out, the main thing is I want to have, I want to help people make a, um, a, a good decision on when to use what product where and you know not be fooled by the label and so that'll wrap up this week um i hope all that makes sense and i hope this helps shed some light on you know what we're looking at and sort of the caveats and things that you need to be aware of and anyway, I, I appreciate you watching and lots more coming we'll catch you next time all right thanks for watching uh make sure you like and subscribe and if you want to get notifications every week about the videos make sure that you hit the bell button and you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Eric Reason. Have a good one.